Now, you may have heard the joke. How many Americans does it take to screw in a light bulb? 12. One to climb the ladder and 11 to file the lawsuit. <laughs> what about Indians? Oh, just one. We would, of course, uh, never wish to imply that an Indian life is worth more or less than another. I myself believe in the sanctity of all life. But the market has its own logic, and if we're willing to live with it, we must make the most of the choices it makes. Because if there's one thing that we at Dow want you to remember today, it's that the only good skeleton is a gold skeleton. Ooh. Surprise. <laughs> this is Gilda. She's the mascot for the Dow Acceptable Risk Program. Gilda is here to basically tell you that if you have a skeleton in the closet, it may not be just a skeleton. It could very well be a golden skeleton as well. We all know how important it is to speak truth to power, but the question is, what's the best way to do it? Mike Bonanno and Andy Bicklebaum, also known as the Yes Men, found their own particularly clever way. Pretend you're the power, then say the truth you wish they'd say. Then sit back and wait for the inevitable poo storm and use it to draw attention to the real hoax. That big corporations and the governments they buy give a damn about anything except money and who has it. It's a good plan, and you can see it in action in the mostly documentary, The Yes Men Fix the World. The most impressive and effective example of the Yes Men's strategy is when they set up a fake website claiming to be Dow Chemical, one of the world's biggest companies. Dow had bought a company called Union Carbide, which was responsible for the largest corporate cause tragedy in world history, the chemical leak at their plant in Bhopal, India in 1984, which caused the death of thousands of people and the debilitating lifelong illness of hundreds and thousands more. Union Carbide refused to take responsibility for the spill or clean it up, and neither did Dow when they bought them. The BBC got tricked by the Yes Men's site and invited them on the news as Dow spokesmen, where they falsely told 300 million viewers that Dow was actually going to do the right thing and give $12 billion to the people of Bhopal to pay for treatment of its six citizens and try to make amends for the crime committed against them. Dow wasn't going to go bankrupt, they'd just make a little less profit than they had the year before. Surely the shareholders would agree that it was a small price to pay to finally correct this grievous crime. But no. The shareholders in Wall Street freaked, causing Dow stock to drop by $2 billion in 23 minutes. This is where I think the Yes Men Fix the World makes its strongest point, that the business world, the free market, punishes companies that are willing to reduce their profits, even just a little, to do the right thing, whether it be compensating victims of negligence or limiting their damage to the environment. Just think about that for a second and ask yourself why all Republicans and too many Democrats believe that we should completely unleash corporate forces that actually hate goodness and then let them rule the world. The Bhopal section of the film, which also includes the Yes Men going to Bhopal to see if their hoax had caused unintentional damage by raising, then dashing people's hopes, is definitely the best and most subversive part of the film. The Yes Men's other stunts, like trying to sell software that calculates how many people a company can kill and still turn a profit, going to an oil conference to market a new biofuel made from the dead bodies of climate change victims, and pitching ridiculous inflatable suits to protect the ultra-rich from terrorist attacks and natural disasters, feel more silly and less significant than the Bhopal stunt. The film also suffers from the fact that it was made by the Yes Men, with corny staged segues showing them hatching their schemes from their ratty secret hideout, instead of being a documentary made about them by an outside party. Some of the best parts of the film are the ones that feel most like a true documentary, like watching the Yes Men getting increasingly nervous as they prepare to tell their gigantic lies, and not knowing what the consequences will be. In the end, it's hard not to admire the sheer balls on the Yes Men, as they travel around impersonating government officials and spokesmen for some of the world's most powerful companies. And in a better world, someone would give these guys their own TV show. A lot of times, the Yes Men Fix the World feels like the love child of a Michael Moore documentary and a Sasha Baron Cohen flick, combining overtly progressive politicking with practical jokes and characters that allow their targets to essentially skewer themselves. While this movie doesn't have as broad an appeal and it peaks early, it's a good example of what both Shakespeare and Jon Stewart have shown, that when it comes to speaking truth to power, it's the jesters who usually do it best. I'm Jonathan Kim, and this is a Rethink Review.